Hey, hello. Can you listen to me? Yeah? yeah? Thanks, everybody, for coming. I'm a bit nervous. Paul said that I'll be talking of a uh, new typeface. It's not that new, uh, but it's, I've been working on it uh, basically almost three years. Is that right, Christian? 2016, two years. Two years, because I'm done. So I'm done with the typeface now. Uh, this is uh, how it used to look at w, w Magazine. Uh, for, I don't know if everybody knows W Magazine, but it's a fashion magazine, um, and it's been around for a long time. So this is kind of the, 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 the old design before um, the last uh, 10 years. And uh, this is exactly how we look, uh, how it looked when we came to the project. 2016, uh, that's when we started the project. Uh, the new creative director, Sian Brown, and the art director, Jeff Borch, commissioned us uh, a new typeface. So they were new on the magazine, and they, they were looking to have a custom typeface uh, for the magazine. Uh, the typeface was called BB. Uh, you'll see a lot of, of it here. Uh, and it's coming because of the last name of Sian and Jeff. So that's, that's why it's called BB uh, at that time. Uh, and basically, this is uh, part of the brief or the beginning of the conversations that we have with them. Uh, they were looking for a, for a typeface, for a new typeface for, uh, for fashion. But they didn't want to feel uh, too derivative about fashion. Like, we know the typeface that basically they are related in fashion. So they were looking for something uh, a bit different that normally we expect on fashion magazines. And uh, that's more or less how we started the conversation. You'll see a lot of quotes here from Xi'an. Uh, I think they are important to, to tell the story here. They have like, I think since the beginning, they have like a a uh, really good idea of what they were looking for uh, in their mind. Uh, more or less the direction that they wanted to follow, it was already on their mind that made things easier for us once we started designing. In the conversation, um, there was no uh, many visual reference, and this was the only reference that we have. They found this uh, piece of lettering, and they they use it as, as the main reference. So they were kind of looking something like this in this direction, super vertical, because also the magazine is a, a large format. So they wanted to take advantage of that and uh, having like uh, long headlines, but they needed to stack them. So that's why the, the, the verticality of the letters was really important. Uh, but also from here, they started making uh, some sketches by themselves. Uh, this, this is really important on the conversation because they have clear what they were looking for. And they were thinking about having a serif, a semi-serif and a sans-serif typeface. They didn't know exactly how, how they want to do or to have this done, but they have some ideas about it. And, uh, Remember the lettering I showed you? So they kind of started doing an exercise by themselves. Uh, like, you see the second line on Forco? They trim the, the serifs of the typeface. So basically, it's kind of uh, trying to show us what they were looking for. Then you see the next page. It's exact. It's not the same typeface, but they were just trying to show us what, what was on their mind. They wanted a very customizable uh, typeface. What does this mean? I think is that they want to have different stuff that they could swap and use uh, and make every issue different and fresh. Like not all of them look exactly the same all the time. And that's more or less what they were looking. And uh, they also have this, uh, or, or, or Sian has this on his mind. He was already thinking about this typeface called Penumbra that was done in 1994. And uh, it's a, it has a sans serif, then it has a flare serif, a uh, flare, uh, no serif, it's kind of a, just a flaring there. 
Then they have a half serif, they call it like that, and then they have a full serif style. And this gave us like a lot of ideas or, or the direction, how, how we need to push the, the, the design. At least I struggled a little bit with this because I didn't have an image of, of the lower case. Uh, they didn't show us like how the lower case is gonna look. It's not exactly that, you, that we needed that, but just having the other, uh, the, the other lettering, it was a bit difficult, at least for me, to understand what I want to do on, on the lower case. This is a normal process that we have at commercial sometimes in some projects if, if we have time, all of us. Uh, in this case, we worked at the beginning, Paul Barnes, Greg Gazdovich, uh, that is sitting there, and, and myself. <laughs> and you see that um, the three of us, this, uh, the, the first exercise are from Greg. I think the three of us, we understood the idea since the beginning. And we went more or less in the same direction, but because it's done by different hands, uh, the outcome is completely different. So you see some of the sketches of Greg and they have uh, the feeling and it has some of the of the DNA of the lettering that we that I show at the beginning. Uh, starting playing with this idea also of the sans serif version to see where where we could go. Uh, this is Paul, uh, and I think Paul and I we went more or less on the same direction, like kind of close. So we were uh, sketching in different places because Paul is in London and I was here in New York sketching this. And then when we saw the sketches, it was like, oh, we kind of have uh, similar ideas. Like um, We draw it a, a bit different, but it's more or less similar. And he started playing also since the beginning with this. Like the first one was more uh, sans serif, then the next one start having some flaring. And then the, the third one, uh, having uh, longer serifs. Uh, even he did uh, more more for this, but I'm just showing uh, these three. And then um, these are my examples. Uh, first one was literal to, to the reference. So I wanted to start from there and then start seeing where I could go. I told you about like having a problem about thinking about how the, the lowercase could look. And immediately it rang the, it rang the bell uh, Trump Medieval about the shapes that it has on, on the lowercase, kind of um, funky way, in a funky way, how Trump Medieval uh, does. And uh, that's more or less how I started. I quite that down because I, they, didn't, they didn't need like a really outspoken typeface also. So it's kind of just uh, quite in that down and trying to, to do it in that way. But if you see, this is kind of similar of what Paul was also doing. So they are not the same, but they are kind of close. And uh, we, we just worked with this uh, a few words at the beginning. That was enough for them. So they could see things in their context and start playing around on the page just with a few words, and that's enough so most of the time with uh, with magazines. Uh, but in some point, um, Xi'an said this, let's just keep in mind that we're going to fuck things up. Uh, <laughs> and what he meant with that is that he will take what we did and he will start moving around things, like increasing the contrast. He tried also like cutting out the serifs just to see uh, how things will work. Also, this version, uh, they increase the the contrast, uh, this is also pole exercise, uh, increasing the contrast also, and trimming the, the, the serifs, just making it full sans serif. Uh, and this was mine. But the sketches I showed you, they were in like high contrast. And they were the ones came in, coming up with the idea of making the typeface super high contrast for the large size. He also said that they needed a level of polish polishness and cheekness, but at the same time, they wanted to be a, a bit quirk and fuck it up. 
It's funny because I, I told you there are a lot of quotes from Cian on emails, uh, but I was reading them when I was preparing the presentation and I told like, these are great <laughs> because they explain well the whole story of the, of the project. So at the end, uh, they decided going for, the, for my idea and that's how it happens most of the time with us. Three of us, we start playing around and sketching and then we show the client uh, the ideas that we already decide inside of the studio that are good for the project and then they just decide this is the one that we're gonna go for. And that's how it happened. Uh, from here, I remember also Cian say, just keep it sexy, <laughs> just, just keep it sexy. And uh, I started from here playing around the idea of, uh, at the end, we decided, or, or they decided, uh, both of us, we decided that what they needed was just a, a headland face, because you see here there are sizes, but basically any of this is for, uh, for text sizes, like for really small sizes. All of them are headlines. So it's like uh, sub-headlines, headlines, and then like super big headlines. And uh, we needed to do like three different optical sizes, but also here is where we play with the idea of being sans, uh, semi-sans or semi-serif, and then a serif version. You'll see a little bit later. Exactly this is why they decided uh, this, uh, this idea was working for them because I think it was matching of what they were looking for at the beginning, like to be fashion, but not uh, directly uh, related with the typefaces that we know as fashion typefaces. And uh, I think this is exactly why they decided to go for this idea. This is how it looks, uh, the typeface uh, in, in, in uh, some of the covers. Um, I'm showing you just a little bit to see uh, how they were using this. And uh, basically it just became in this. And here is exactly, you'll see the difference between them. We have, and we call it in this, in this uh, way also because uh, we were thinking about calling it at the beginning um, display uh, deck. And uh, I think it was a small, oh no, it was, it was uh, display medium and deck. But to make things easier in, inside of the magazine was easier just to call them as the size that was intended. So nobody will uh, change them. Just like, okay, I know like this is, this is for a small sizes, it's still headlines, but it's a small. Then I have like a medium size and then I have the large size. Here are some examples of the difference between them. This is the, the very large one that works really well like on sizes like this, then uh, there is the, the medium version, then, um, then it's sturdier than, than, than the large one, and then we have the small one that is more robust and with lower contrast and that even it has these um, um, in traps uh, for the size, to work well on, on the size that the, is intended. And the idea was to design a unique display family that accentuate the provocative uh, photography and cut it edge of fashion. So that's more or less the outcome. Uh, the project was done in three phases. Uh, yeah, three phases. Uh, the first one was just uh, romance and basically optical sizes, uh, small, medium and large, and no weights. So, that was a project maybe that we had like a, just two months for, for doing this, this part. And, um, and then the second part was adding weights to, to all of them. Some of the special characters, because sometimes we don't show them, but uh, I kind of liked some of them. Uh, that, that's why I'm, I'm showing to you. Then uh, exactly, when, when I started working on the, um, on the heaviest uh, weights of, of the typeface, uh, they started doing also this uh, flip book of the magazine. So like a main uh, version of, of W that basically 
how was working. I don't know right now because I haven't seen it in 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 a couple of years. But I know that they still do the the special issue. It's like they will uh, glue <coughs> two of the magazines, and you were able just flipping the other one and open the men's uh, version. But also you were also able to open both of them on the table and then flip through both of them at the same time. They did that once. Just yeah. once? It's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's two covers. Now it's just... Yeah. Okay. So, since I've been in Mexico, I haven't been able to see the, the, the physical ones. But that was a cool idea, but it was also like a huge magazine. Some of the first examples of use of the typeface, uh, uh, different sizes, they, I think that's the medium, the, the medium uh, optical size. Uh, this might be also medium optical size, uh, large optical size. But you see what I was talking at the beginning, like uh, because it's a large format, they've been able to, to, to explode that with the typeface. They, they are able to fit also like really long headlines or even just to make the typeface big and uh, and it, it doesn't cut the the words more examples of it uh, here is I think this is a small one or even medium I think that's that's medium uh, that's medium and then uh, also some medium size there yeah I already told you this uh, it has some initial proportions for for magazines or for fashion magazines in general and uh, it was about e exaggerating the verticality of the page the second part was adding um, adding heavyweights and today we were talking Christian and I about this uh, he came with uh, with this um, idea of we haven't left Lubalin since long time ago because magazines are still doing uh, a lot of uh, Lubalin, Lubalin way. Um, Sian came uh, with this uh, example and a couple of uh, other examples, like saying, "This is the direction where I want to push uh, BB. Uh, it needs to be still like pretty narrow, but it needs to be also super heavy." So it was a challenge also because of the proportions of the typeface. But basically, it was also a cool exercise because normally when we design uh, typefaces and when we design like the heaviest weight, the proportions of the, of the, of, of the typeface also change uh, or horizontally. But in this case, you'll see uh, it doesn't change much. Uh, actually, it's kind of just... Uh, feeding the typeface and kind of trying to find the, the, the last step until you just get it fat. <laughs> so it was cool because uh, you need to find still the balance uh, between the space of the letters and also the, the balance inside of the letters and uh, sti still make them readable. This is for the large size, of course, because this doesn't work on, on the small sizes. On, on the on the small sizes, we went just to like one step uh, below, like this, like just bold, and uh, on the large one we have until black weights. So they didn't use at the beginning the heaviest weights, and when they have this uh, issue of the flip book, uh, the men's uh, the men's version, uh, they separate also both versions with this. So the 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 women uh, version, they they were using just the light weights, and the men's version, they were using just the heavy weights. So that's basically when we finished the second part of the magazine because they were doing this uh, special issue, and uh, they use it for first time in that way. Uh, I think now they use it also more like on on the regular because they don't do the the the, the men's uh, version all the time, but. Um, here's some example this is also medium uh, then you see like uh, real uh, big sizes and then the last part it was adding italics uh, it's it's a bit funny because at the beginning they didn't want italics uh, that was kind of a um, 
I think in some point also was uh, the budget, but also somebody say that they don't need to use italics. And uh, we were like, I guess well, they're gonna need it in some point. And this <laughs> happened like a year later, then they came back and say like, you know, and Cian was the one who pulled this out. I think he even just sneaked through the company like saying it's not italics, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they ended up with the italics. And, it's, uh, and the funny part about this is uh, that not wanting italics, we ended up with four different italics. <laughs> so I think that's what makes the project even nicer. And I think for me this, uh, always the beginning of the projects is the, the, the part that I enjoy most. But then when I started again with the italics, this was a lot of fun. I just wanted to, to get a little crazy. Um, I came, I think, from the four of them, uh, with three of them, and number three, the italic number three, uh, that was Christian idea. So basically all of them, they are coming from the, from the same um, skeleton, but then we are just changing one by one until we got like different and completely styles. And their response again like, at the beginning to the brief that they wanted to have a really custom uh typeface for headlines, to change even headlines often and always feel fresh. So having four, they will have like a lot of options, even just for use, to use them on headlines. So, so far we've seen just on the magazine two of them the number one and number two, they haven't used uh, number three yet and number four, but I hope they use it in some point. Here's some examples. Ba basically, the examples I have is for, uh, uh, yeah, for the number one, but in a small sizes. So you'll see it's just into the wild. Uh, then again, uh, the text that is there is just uh, number one. And then the craziest one, that I really loved first time when I saw it and actually was on Instagram was this because they combined the Roman and, and the Italic. It's, and a lot of people was asking me, oh, that's really cool. And it's like, I didn't do that. <laughs> so I didn't do that. Yeah, because I wasn't the one who combined both of them. So it was just inside of the, of, of the magazine. And it looks crazy. Uh, and then here it is. So this is a uh, number number two. Uh, maybe the size uh, is is not uh, the best right now here, but you'll see in, in a little bit. And then as uh, you see again, this is exactly what they were looking, and uh, that's what uh, TDC was also showing. But it's just crazy the idea. And I think I love these projects because I think if they were done by myself, I. I wouldn't came out with the whole idea. So it's kind of me, uh, the studio, and also the, the the creative director. So that's how I think like a really good ideas always happen, not just one by person. Here, more examples of the same. It was same issue. And, um, and we are, um, I told you at the beginning, um, the, the typeface uh, is done. Uh, we are about to release it soon. Uh, we don't have date exactly, but uh, we changed the name. So it's not gonna be called BB. Uh, it's gonna be called Ayer. Uh, it was done Ayer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ayer is uh, yesterday. <laughs> so, no, no, no. So we are calling Ayer also because it's a, it's a cool name, uh, but also uh, Sian helped us with the name. We, we struggled a little bit like finding a, the right name. And then on the last minute we were talking with Sian and he got us a list and Ayer was there and he's like, okay, I think this is cool. Christian also thought that was a cool name and we are going for Ayer. So Ayer is gonna be um, published soon. Uh, at commercial type. Here is the, 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 the whole spectrum of italics. This is the poster one, uh, the one that goes with the Roman, uh, that is, uh, let's say, like the first one uh, and, and related immediately with the poster. Then, uh, um, yeah, 
This is how it looks, the texture. Then we have uh, a year poster angular. Angular, That's a Christian idea of making it uh, super angular. I was a bit um, skeptical at the beginning, but then uh, we show it to so many friends and they just love it. And then I just fall in love with it also. A bit late. <laughs> yeah, here it is. The the so we have like five weights for the, for all the posters, also romans. Here is also how it looks on texture in some text. We have also a year cursive. That this is a. Uh, I think this was my first idea, and I stick to the idea a lot of time because we were kind of throwing away this idea in some point, but I managed to keep it. Uh, uh, but it's not that one, <laughs> but it's this one. And uh, that's the one that you saw on, 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 the, on, on the spread, the one that was too small. And uh, what I like about this also is that uh, it's the first time also I've been able to, to do uh, one with swashes. Oh. I'm Latin, so <laughs> Latin. <laughs> Latin type designers, we love uh, swashes. <laughs> and uh, it's been the first typeface I've been able, I, and I hope it's the only one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, 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 I like this one a lot. Uh, I think it's really useful also on, on, on fashion work, could be r super useful. And uh, then the last one, we have uh, a year poster, black leather. And this was also one of my crazy ideas, just like, because we didn't have like a, a slow black leather. It's just like, this is gonna be a black leather, but I'm just gonna slant it. And uh, that's what I did, I presented, that was the last one, but we keep it at the very end. Also the same range of weights, some of the texture. And then um, just last part, is the whole overview of the family. I think it's around like 40, 42 uh, styles, counting italics. I'm sometimes I'm against uh, against of doing like big big uh, families, but I think in this case makes sense, and it's not also because I'm doing like ten or twelve weights of it. It's just basically just five weights, but I'm giving like four different italics and. Uh, also, three different um, optical sizes. And here is the last part. So we have also a year uh, um, medium, and then we have the deck version that actually is this, the small one. We changed names again as we planned at the beginning. And basically, that's the story of, of the typeface. Uh, don't know if you have some questions or something that you want to say. Thank you. Uh, I have a random question. I, I see uh, on the, uh, the, uh, the magazine website, and mm -hmm. you guys are using the same typeface here. Was there any, like, I don't know, it's a very high contrast uh, type typeface. Face. And I was wondering if you guys did any like accessibility uh, tests on those? The, the, the only version that is they've been using is the medium size and yeah. the medium the, and the medium weight. Mm -hmm. We just uh, it's, it's mostly small on the site. On is is the medium. That's the one they we it's optimize. A mix of the two. A mix of the two. But we just optimize one or two uh -huh. uh, for for the web and they are not using any of the rest on, on the web. Yeah. Uh, so basically they are just solving everything with these two mm -hmm. two weights and I think if they have sometimes but they are just image. Uh, uh, but the rest the whole website is just mm -hmm. done with uh, two of them mm -hmm. and the small sizes. So we'll have them available also but we think any of them, they are actually useful in, in really small sizes. Mm -hmm. So the, the best part of them is just to use them big, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. 
this website yet. Yeah, there, there wasn't really a proper redesign of their website. Um, it was really a, a reskinning of what they had before. Mm -hmm. So the uh, it was mostly the small and, and one of the medium weights, uh, medium size. Weights. Medium size, yeah. Medium. For, for bigger headlines and feature stories, but it's, it's predominantly the small. It was really just swapping the fonts in for what they had before. Uh -huh. um, and Condé Nast is not in great shape financially right now, and w is, w is not Vogue, uh -huh. so it doesn't get the resources that something like Vogue or Vanity Fair uh -huh. um, is going to get from, from the parent company. So, um, yeah, I think uh, this typeface is probably going to be better used on the web um, outside of the original client that commissioned it. Mm -hmm. Even uh, they are not using real italics, they are just uh, slanting the, the Roman that we, that we optimize for, uh, for, uh, for the website. It's also, remember, we didn't have italics at the beginning, so <laughs> yeah. basically they solved it on that way. And it wasn't uh, because we didn't do the, the job or they didn't. It's at the moment, nobody had it. It took like more than a year than that when we started with the italics. So that explains a lot of things because the website was already out. But also the, the creative directors of the print magazine have very little control over what the website looks what like. The website mm -hmm. yeah. Like two different teams. It's a completely different team. They, they show them stuff every once in a while, mm -hmm. but not necessarily what do you think, but more, here's what it's going to be. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. 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 Even that happens sometimes when we, because we need to give like beta fonts, mm -hmm. and then they are kind of uh, mixed with when we deliver the final ones. Sometimes like, is this the, the final one that we send? And, uh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. But we don't know. Yeah. Because it's difficult to control. Mm -hmm. um, That's a pity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We feed the fonts sure. into a large machine and then things happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I really love your work, and especially the contrast in this and also in Kanaima. And I see that you've done a lot of hand leathering. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, did this play, like, did your hand leathering play any? No, not really. Uh, at the beginning, when when I started with the type design, I used to sketch more by hand, and uh, I think in some point at the studio was kind of the only one like doing more uh, hand, uh, doing things with the hands. But I kind of stopped also. Like now, I got better. That I think sometimes it's easier and faster just to draw on the screen. And because I have the, how the tools work, it's kind of easier just to put them on, on digital sometimes. But sometimes when I do like lettering, and it's uh, the thing I like of lettering is the, the, the sign painting style. Uh, I normally I do that first with the brush, and then I, I start tracing on top of it. But just because I love also doing that thing. It's not that I like, Calligraphy, I don't like it much. It's, it's related with the sign painting thing, but I love the brush and the way of, and the shape of these kind of letters more than the uh, traditional calligraphy way that I'm really bad also with that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't do it much anymore. Uh, um, thanks uh, for uh, your words of Canela. And also, because a lot of people, uh, after, after, uh, because I did uh, this after Canela, they were relating Canela a lot, and that it has some of things of Canela. But you saw the the thing; it wasn't planned like that. Basically, it was coming from the idea of them of having a sans, uh, sans, and then a serif typefaces that was easier to use kind of uh, Canela serifs or Canela way of having serifs that it just kind of seems. Uh, related in some point, but if you put both together, I think they are uh, different in some way. But just because I'm the same person, <laughs> could feel like I'm just doing canela all the time. <laughs> yeah. Somebody? Yeah. So, I mean, a serif, a sans serif, 
so many different weights, ultimately 42 different final um, final weights, I mean not weights, um, versions. Uh -huh. um, how, was there ever a moment where you, and then this black letter, was there ever, and a um, swash, was there ever a moment where you felt conflicted or confused about the overall identity of the typeface family or how was that kind of managed? No, not, not really. Actually, this, this project was, uh, was really fun since the beginning and mm. uh, also because we have this space between all of the faces like uh, because I, I let the project maybe for a year without touching it and without having italics. When we were talking about the italics, it's kind of just, because that's something I didn't mention, I forgot, but uh, Xian has the idea of having like a round four. When he came back to us, it's like he even pointed a um, uh, project from Burton uh, or a colleague uh, that he made on, on type media. Uh, and he also had like different italics, not similar to these ones, but his project was like that. And he was pointing that project. Like, I wish we can have like, three or four italics or five or six. So we were the ones that kind of wiped that down a little bit. So it's like, okay, it's cool, but let's see which ones they work with the project. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, what, what I get conflicted is when is the production part. When I'm done with the ideas and when I just need to fill the rest, it's like, okay, needs to be done. But, uh, but that's it. So basically, on the process of uh, creating them, no, at least for me, no, I don't know about Christian, but um, I think we were just like, you are the one doing it, so do as much as you want. No, but also it's like, we have also these conversations always, like uh, sometimes I have ideas or about like, let's say of, on swashes, and sometimes they are too much. And then Christian is the one like calling them out, like, okay, maybe, these are not working well, or maybe they are too much. Sometimes they're also maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> or sometimes they are not enough. So, yeah, he's saying like, yeah, we need more A's. And I'm like, okay, I just made three. <laughs> I might eight eight. So, so normally that's exactly how it works. But I think it works really well uh, when I'm just not doing it by myself. Mm -hmm. When 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 or my colleagues are looking on them. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that you've like moved more digital. Mm -hmm. In the case, knowing this would be used for print and a lot of like large app, did you print out a lot of tests? And oh yeah, how, that's how did, a, how did you sort of engage in that process or? No, 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 yeah, that's a, something that uh, since, uh, I think first when I was on Type Media, they, they they push it us to print things, and then when when I got in commercial, it's like everything needs to be print if it's gonna be for print. So we are always testing on on, on the thing. So I'm not testing on offset, but uh, but we are testing on, on on the printer on paper all the time. Like it just needs to be done there, and it's easier. Uh, even I, when I do workshops uh, uh, about. Uh, because I do a class in Mexico, I always uh, start with my students by just drawing by hand and uh, looking into into some um, old type, but they are putting attention on the things there when they are not on the computer. Because sometimes they are more more uh, um, focused on on the on the on the program and they just start, ah, how did you do this here? And how did you move here? And how did you get the rule? And, how, and they just start, stop putting attention on the things that they need to do. And once you do it on paper, you put attention on the things. And it's more like, it looks completely different from the screen when it's printed. And also, because here we scale things and we make a lot of zoom, uh, then sometimes when it's on the paper, it's like a real scale, and you see things like if they are really working. But I never skip that. That's that's for for sure.
A lot of paper, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> but we recycle the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? No? Yeah. Uh, was there ever any discussion of a body type? Um, you know, or was it always just thinking about displays, titles, no, subtitles? It, with the magazine? Yeah. It was always just the display one. Mm -hmm. Also, it has to do with the budget. Mm -hmm. So, since the beginning is like... W so, because what they were looking at was like something unique and yeah. that nobody else had. The best way of doing that is with the headlines. So, that's big. So, everybody's gonna see it. The text is important. I mean, it's important, but it's not the one that is gonna make it look different to other magazines. So that's when I think they use the money for that. Uh, I, I discovered something also, like while I was doing the presentation that I didn't put attention before, that this is the second time that uh, we paired something with Ken Lu. His typeface is the one uh, that is being used. Uh, Ken Lu is another type designer from, uh, for, from Europe. Uh, Type network. One of them. He's semi-independent. Uh, so, but uh, the 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 time before that was uh, so his typeface is the the one on on the text. Uh, is uh, Whitman? Yeah, it was Whitman. Chris? Yeah. Yes. And uh, and we also uh, participate on Time uh, magazine. Uh, we didn't design it exactly for them. They are using uh, duplicate Ionic, and uh, they are using also the typeface that is the text basis from Ken. And I've been involved in both projects, but during these days I discovered that that I didn't look at it before. <laughs> well, it's kind of an interesting illustration of the priorities of the two magazines. Mm -hmm. W was using one of Kent's typefaces uh -huh. off the shelf for text and commissioning a headline face where Time commissioned a text face from Kent to fit the copy in mm -hmm. a very particular way, and they used a typeface off the shelf from us for headlines. Yeah, exactly. That's completely the opposite. And uh, still, they were looking for something that wasn't used too much, uh, that they were able to get something new from the headline one. So the important part for Time was uh, the text. And in this case, is uh, was the opposite. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> did, did the text that they were using in the magazine have any effect on the the look and feel of the the titles because you were they were pairing them together? No, no, no. Actually, because uh, the process at the beginning was uh, everything was happening at the same time. So basically, they were up. as you saw in some of the examples when uh, when they were trimming things, they were all already working on the layout, mm -hmm. so that they were also trying a lot of uh, text faces at the beginning to see which one they gonna just uh, buy that they were already done and to see how they will pair it with the with the um, with the new headline typeface but uh, it didn't play much about like we didn't take uh, in count much exactly uh, the shapes of the of, of the text one so it was more about this idea of the verticality on the page I think we didn't know it was going to be Whitman. No, also we. This was well underway. Even like I check um, my old PDFs from the first sketches, and it's like a list of a lot of them. They were just trying and trying to decide which one was the best. So no, that wasn't part. I think they kind of knew how the layout was looking uh, and just finding the, the right typefaces for it. But they had in mind more or less the style of the whole magazine. Good. Thank you. Thanks so much.